Hi, my name is Jason Politor of Iridian Spectral Technologies, and today I'll be talking about optical filters for Earth observation. You can't manage what you don't measure is a quote that's often misattributed to Peter Drucker, but the source of which is actually shown here from H. James Harrington. Earth observation satellites provide the ability to measure with the perspective of distance, Earth phenomena such as uh, commerce, uh, environment and weather, etc., and therefore manage these phenomena. So what is this Earth observation data used for? Well, Earth observation data is generated in uh, use in disaster response, where we can see uh, uh, the effects of flooding or forest fires in defense and business intelligence to track assets in mapping and global information services um, weather and the environment, either to see storms as they arise or track phenomena such as lightning from satellites and look at environmental changes. In agriculture, to plan and track uh, methods of improving crops. And similarly in forestry, to, to uh, track uh, and monitor forestry practices. Earth observation uh, technologies have evolved uh, substantially over the past uh, 50 years since they've been in use. The um, first Earth observation satellite was launched by NASA in 1972, Landsat 1, and had four uh, spectral bands in the visible and near infrared, providing an 80 meter uh, ground resolution. And this, this beast weighed 1,800 kilograms. Fast forward about 45 years to the latest in space agency Earth observation satellites, Sentinel-2B, uh, launched by ESA in 2017. This, uh, in contrast, has 13 different spectral bands and a substantial improvement in uh, res ground resolution, although it's still a, a rather large 1,100-kilogram uh, satellite. Uh, additionally, over the past 50 years, the evolution has gone from space agency large single satellite builds to constellations of small uh, CubeSat builds, such as the SuperDove um, that has been launched uh, in 2019, dozens of them by Planet Labs. This uh, uh, satellite provides eight different spectral bands covering the visible and, and near infrared and provides a ground resolution of less than one meter with a weight of a, a mere four kilograms. This completely changes the dynamics of what can be done in space and at what cost. The economics of launching satellites into space has changed drastically um, over the course of, of putting up uh, satellites for Earth observation. With the costs plummeting by orders of magnitude, the number of satellites that are being launched is, uh, is, is uh, inversely uh, increasing. The new cost dynamics make space accessible to commercial players and has de-risked going into space. So has changed the approach from an old space mentality of high risk and a lot of testing in advance of launch to lower uh, risk and uh, more tolerance for risk because the cost to send up a second satellite or additional satellites is, is so much less. Putting satellites into space has become uh, so routine as, as to not even hit the news anymore. And uh, they're being viewed almost as consumable objects that after their useful life of two to five years, deorbit and are replaced by other technology. As a consequence of this uh, uh, ability to launch many, many satellites in a, uh, a, a relatively inexpensive commercial uh, price point, the number of um, sensors, either multispectral sensors or more panchromatic sensors uh, flying, and the resolutions of those sensors has, has again skyrocketed um, over the last 40 to 50 years. All of this has uh, tied into and driven a, an Earth observation space race. Participants in this include space agencies, such as those listed on the left here, the NASA, ESA, Indian Space Agency, Japan, Argentina, China, France, Germany, Canada, among others, and commercial players as well. Commercial players that launch and, and uh, 
monitor and manage their own satellites and data, or that work to provide solutions to the space agencies. Uh, a very incomplete list is shown on the, the right here, but with some of the, ma the major players that have um, multiple satellites flying in, in uh, low Earth orbit performing Earth observation currently. So the talk is about optical filters and how they are used and influence Earth observation. Um, so we'll, uh, what I'll focus on are two aspects, uh, which are single band filters, as well as multi-zone filter arrays that provide multi-spectral imaging capabilities. In both cases, the fundamental functionality that optical filters provide to Earth observation uh, satellites is wavelength selectivity. These are the sunglasses on the eyes in the skies, allowing the satellites to only see the information they want to see and not uh, get uh, that information polluted by other uh, science lines of interest or background uh, uh, light like from the sun. So the first example here is of a single band optical filter. This is work that Iridium has done in partnership with uh, Talos Alenia Space and Leonardo for the ESA's uh, Meteosat third generation lightning imager um, program. This filter is a, a single large filter that's looking at um, 777.4 nanometer oxygen triplet line. The, this line is indicative of the presence of lightning as this satellite is intended to, to monitor and track lightning globally. So in order to do so, this has to have a large uh, optic and a large clear aperture, but with an extraordinarily narrow, a narrow and very, very uniform optical performance across that clear aperture. Iridian has achieved this to a center wavelength with a tolerance of within plus or minus 10 picometers of the target and a uniformity to within plus or minus 100 picometers over a 125 millimeter clear aperture on this part. The contour map on the left shows variation in center wavelength with each color being 100 picometer steps. As you can see, the variation across the part is to within plus or minus 100 picometers as stated previously across the entire 125 millimeter clear aperture of this part. The plot on the upper right shows what appears to be a single trace taken from on this part, but is actually 69 separate measurements. They just all happen to lie on top of each other due to the extreme uniformity achieved. Multi-zone filters provide the capability to enable a single detector to turn into a multi-spectral imager, which is extremely powerful. Rather than having a single large filter looking at a single band of interest, we can create a detector where certain pixels look at certain wavelength bands of interest and therefore can, can discriminate different uh, science lines uh, and different phenomena. The example here shows some work that Iridian did uh, almost a decade ago now uh, in partnership with ABB for a space technology development program with the Canadian Space Agency. This shows a multi-band 10-zone butcher block assembly uh, and in the center, the size of our now defunct Canadian penny. Uh, these bands were scattered over the mid to long wave infrared, and this was intended for um, polar communication and weather analysis from uh, satellites. This is uh, an example, this butcher block, of one of the two approaches that we take to this array manufacturing. It's a butcher block style where individual filters are coated, cut up, and then assembled together into a single uh, robust butcher block assembly, or patterned filters where through the use of photolithography, a monolithic substrate can have multiple coatings applied to it in a pattern um, as well. We have the capability to, pro to produce hybrid builds that take advantage of both the monolithic and hybrid approaches where we'll have parts of an array that are patterned and then butcher block assembled to other patterned parts of an array. Assembled arrays are very, very useful as they're very flexible. Essentially, any filter that we can create as a single standalone filter can then be cut up and assembled together into an array. This allows us to do many, many bands and complex uh, filter coatings and is great for addressing pro projects where there's constraints on cost and, and without a constraint on the complexity of the filter. Um, the coatings are, again, 
coded separately and attached together using robust assembly methods and uh, space approved um, epoxies, black epoxies to prevent light leakage between the different seams. And we've achieved zone to zone transitions of clear apertures uh, on the order of, of slightly more than a, or in, on the order of 100 microns. And have built arrays with as many as 10 and starting to, to be more different spectral bands. Again, this can turn single detectors into multispectral imaging devices, both 1D elements and 2D elements, as shown in the bottom right. Pattern filters are useful and have their own uh, um, uh, position in, in multispectral arrays. Uh, as uh, filters requiring a very small transition from one zone to another um, may not be compatible with the 100 micron plus uh, requirements of a butcher block array. Additionally, being, being monolithic creates uh, no uh, issues with coplanarity and alignment from zone to zone. Uh, we perform these multi-zone uh, coatings in a ISO class 6 clean room and can pattern up to 150 millimeter diameter wafers and have done as many as five different spectral zones on one of these arrays. The zone-to-zone -zone transitions can vary from anywhere from 5 to 100 microns, depending on the complexity of those coatings. And we can include black uh, coating transition zones uh, to, to isolate these separate spectral bands. There are several advantages to patterned arrays and advantages to butcher block arrays, so they, they each have their own place. In an array that requires multiple elements, the uh, butcher block assembly is definitely advantageous uh, as the coating yields are individual, whereas in a patterned array, the same piece of glass has to go back into the coating run multiple times. And so compounding yields make uh, a, a lot of zones extraordinarily challenging. Uh, when it comes to the complexity of the pattern, a patterned array is, is much more flexible than a butcher block array. The butcher block arrays are limited essentially to typically stripes and occasionally perhaps a, a two by two butcher block build, whereas a patterned array can be patterned to have any, um, any uh, pattern of each of the individual bands. We could spell out Gradian's logo if, if we liked. Again, the complexity of the filter in a butcher block assembly is unlimited. Essentially anything we can do uh, as a standalone filter we can do as a butcher block, whereas in a patterned array, because we have to be concerned with liftoff, we are limited to the thickness and therefore the complexity of the filters that can be produced. Zone transition widths and zone edge light leakage are superior with patterned arrays uh, as they, you know, they're narrower and there is no zone to zone physical transition. However, with the butcher block assembly, we can control some of that, um, that zone edge light leakage through our black seam coating. Again, coplanarity is, is, is guaranteed by design with the patterned arrays and the butcher block assemblies, it has to be controlled by process. So in particular arrays with a large number of individual bands with a very high aspect ratio, long and skinny bars, coplanarity starts to become a challenge. An off-angle crosstalk is, is a, an area where actually butcher block arrays have an, an advantage because of the vertical physical uh, uh, glue seam between the arrays uh, when that is a black uh, uh, absorbing glue. Uh, prevents some off-angle light leakage from going through the edge of one filter into the edge of another filter and therefore onto the uh, detector where it's under. So at Iridian, we've uh, been making individual and multispectral elements for uh, almost a decade now, and we have a, a, a space heritage that uh, includes testing and qualification of filters to survive the rigors of space. Space is a nice environment in terms of low uh, uh, humidity and very stable. However, uh, without the blanket of, of Earth's atmosphere to protect uh, the satellites and their components, the optical filters need to be designed to survive radiation, survive the, um, the, the rigors of launch, thermal shock, uh, 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 vibration testing, um, as well as, uh, as uh, thermal outgassing. And we have uh, provided and performed these tests on our filters uh, to success. So Iridian has been doing optical filters and coatings for over 20 years now. We have a, more than 160 folks um, providing this out of our facility in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. We are an ISO 9001-2015 certified company, and we're registered as part of the Canadian Controlled Goods Program. All of the work 
being done at this facility that was built uh, to our specifications in November of, uh, and we moved into in November of 2015. In general, Iridian has capabilities for anywhere from 300 to 10 microns in wavelength range, customized solutions uh, that we produce with our 20 energetic sputtering chambers and soon to also add evaporative capabilities to push the 10 microns beyond perhaps the 14 microns. All of these systems are controlled by custom design and control software. And as mentioned, we have in-house patterning by orthography. Iridian's approach to dealing with customers involves the three Ps, the first being partnership. We uh, greatly uh, appreciate partnership with our customers from as early in the R&D process through to high volume manufacture. The earlier we can get in, the more we can help influence uh, the specification to balance both the tactical and commercial needs of a product. But we're not, uh, going to just hand that off to somebody else to manufacture as it goes to volume. We will take any and all of the filters that we design and manufacture through to high volume manufacturing in our operation in Ottawa. We produce and ship tens of thousands of filters out of our door every week. One of the unique things about Iridian is our breadth of, of markets that we address. Uh, we, we provide filters for telecom, spectroscopy, uh, space, 3D uh, entertainment, and others. And all of these different markets require some differences in our production processes in order to balance, again, the technical and commercial needs of those, those um, uh, markets. This ability to create a custom production process flow for a given product is unique among our competitors and allows us to, to, to select both the deposition platforms and the pre and post uh, coding deposition processes to address specific different and new product needs. As well, we are uh, very proud of our quality and guarantee performance on our parts. Our product specifications are minimum values, not, tip, not typical values. Fundamentally, Iridian converts glass into finished goods through our multiple deposition coding platforms, but also through our optical visual inspection uh, in, in our uh, filter processing line. Well, that concludes my discussion on optical filters for Earth observation and Iridian spectral technologies in general. Uh, we view ourselves as a reliable partner. We've been around for 20 plus years. Uh, we are Canadian Controlled Goods Program certified, uh, ISO 9001-2015 certified, and we'll be happy to uh, explore any needs for optical filters for Earth observation or other applications. You can contact us by visiting our website at www.iridian.ca or you can email me directly at the contact info uh, shown below. Thank you very much for taking your time and I hope you've enjoyed SPIE DCS's virtual product demo. Thanks.